<laughs> Does anybody really care what ever happened to him? <laughs> no, he's cool and yeah, no. <laughs> <coughs> Lisa caricature. Wow, we we already have two visitors. Oh, I, huh. Yeah, I told him about it. Oh, cool. Oh, Listart, okay, yeah. Well, let me get a picture ready for the episode we are going to be talking about. Uh, what was the name of it? Appaloosa's Most Wanted. Okay. Season 5, Episode 6. Oh, you can enjoy my audio blog on the subject as well. <laughs> Find a picture for them to stare at. Because pictures are cool. Professionalism! <coughs> yes, quite. That's <laughs> a really cool picture, yes. In the meantime, I have turned my cell phone ringer all the way down. So hopefully, I do not get a call. And if I do, it's a buzz instead of a. Yeah. And then we can't differentiate it from that and your usual vibrating toys. Uh, they don't know about those. <laughs> we are they do now. No, 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 no. Come on. Crack. <laughs> no, <I'm just. laughs> we are doing good, Listart. Very, very good. I think. At least I am. Just <laughs> getting annoyed with my Windows thing. Time to share myself with the, um, with my MLP role plays. Ooh. If I had Vans, I would too, but I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one with all the fans. <laughs> I, I can't tell, but I've always had fans. It just gets so warm in my room. Well, it's eventually going to get very warm in here as well, because it's Texas. And it's going to get, like, easily... Unless we get a weird wet summer, it's going to get easily to 100 degrees come June. And it's going to be just... Like, for a long, long time, it's going to be very, very hot. Yeah. Well... Because it's Texas. I At least it's not Houston. Chicago. Houston is terrible. Hot. <laughs> With that. I live in Chicago. I'm used to the cold. I should be used to the hot, considering it gets really hot over here. Not hundreds, but sometimes. Still. Yeah. Too. We have like... 80 degrees is too hot for me. Then I'm like, ugh, die, bastards. Yeah, we've had like summers we've had like 40, 100 plus days, I think. Ugh. Let's start. I agree with you. Too hot. Uh, it's not, not really hot. But our winters are very nice. It's They're not, nice. Our winters are beautiful. We get to negative 40 with wind chill. It's not really hot here, but it's really dry in my room sometimes, and it kills my throat. Mm. Well, at least if it gets hot, it's not humid. I've been down to Houston, that place. I went down there for a week during the summer. If you were outside, it was just... You were instantly just soaked because... The humidity there is just unreal. You get the heat from here and the humidity from there, and it's you add that together, and it's just a just a pain. Hey, so Dex, do you live in the part of Texas where it can be a nice, hot, sunny day, and all of a sudden it starts hailing? Uh, well, I mean, that's a lot of Texas where it can be. I mean. If you don't like the weather, there's an old saying, if you don't like the weather in Texas, wait a day or five that's minutes. How it, that's how it is in Chicago. Only ours yeah. is very drastic. Sometimes it goes from 80 degrees in at uh, 80 degrees at night to 50 degrees in the afternoon. Yeah. That's happened. This is accepted in summer where it's going to be hot. We have the jo easiest job for weathermen. Right now, spring is probably their hardest time because it actually rains, like, a lot. And we get thunderstorms and tornadoes and all that stuff. Tornadoes less often, but we get a lot of thunderstorms and, you know, like, 
the other day one of the trees got hit by lightning I we think um, and it was yeah I mean we get hail and rain heavy rain and thunder and all that stuff all the time during the spring uh, sometimes not hail as much but hail will happen in in the area yeah um, but yeah it, it can spring is just a lot of thunderstorms <laughs> Like, we don't have, like, usually just, like, rain. Rain is weird. We usually have a thunderstorm. I know. I used to live in Texas for, like, ten years. <coughs> have you found the picture yet? <laughs> I found yes, it a while you did. Ago. I think. It's a cool little place. I can't though. see. I can't put out any audio right now because, um... Just yeah, mute. recording. Well, mm. there is a sound button. <laughs> Meh. I'd rather not risk it. Yeah. Well. Yes, the like style Midwest too. <coughs> yeah. It is a twister board of weather. Yeah. You, you live. I live at, you know like Just a southern. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing about Tornado Alley is. It's not very funny, but the odd thing is that, you know, there depends on who you ask what actually constitutes Tornado Alley, and, and some things I'm basically at the very, near the bottom of Tornado Alley, in some places it's not, but yeah, it's, <laughs> you're probably, if you're on it, you're probably at, towards the northernmost part of it, I would imagine. Um, I think think the start meant twister board of weather as in not tornadoes as in like oh. wind bunch of different weather all thrown together ah I thought it was just a different way of talking about twisters nope <laughs> I think it meant more the actual game hmm. <laughs> We're left <laughs> and green. Red I know, I know what you're talking about. You don't have to keep explaining. But yeah, just when I hear twister, that's what comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had an entire winter where it was warm, and then it, well, half a winter when it was warm, and then suddenly in February we had a blizzard. Yeah, we rarely, we, we never get below zero, and we we don't stay below freezing for more than a few days at a time, really, um, at most. And we get snow maybe once or twice a year, if that. Sometimes we don't get snow at all. Usually our our, our Christmases are green. I'm dreaming of a green Christmas. Oh. oh, tell me, I guess tell me when you're ready. <laughs> well, I'm ready. I'm ready. <coughs> I mean, you, you, you can start doing anything. I'm just posting links to the um, stream. Okie dokie. Um... Uh... Okay, so we'll just, start with the main points of this episode. Yep. Uh, don't jump to conclusions without having all the facts. It's kind of a, it's kind of there. My more favored thing is um, kind of a paraphrasing of Hanlon's razor. Never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity, but or in this as klutziness. Whose razor? Hanlon's H A N L O N. Never heard of that before. Yeah, never attribute. It's never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. Oh, cool. People are more likely to be stupid than malicious. So. Yeah. Like derpy. Well, she's not stupid. She's klutzy. Um. Anything on that one? Uh, Do you pick up any other messages? Um, I thought it was an interesting tie-in with um, the a couple episodes ago with Apple Bloom and the rest of the Crusaders and their 
cutie mark issues. Because <laughs> it was kind of a... A mm. actual manifestation of their pro- their own fears. Because they yeah. were afraid, what if I don't like my cutie mark? And there they see that's what happens. When it turns out, it was just they misunderstood mm-hmm. the entire yeah so even if you get it, even if you don't understand it immediately eventually you will it's not usually bad it's usually just something you may not understand immediately completely yeah and cutie uh-huh. marks aren't generally evil it yeah. or in like this case he thought it was a curse when it turns out it was just he was looking at it the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Um, my notes are like, there are ponies that misconstrue their own marks. Some of the more ambiguous marks might be more prevalent, despite the fact they often occur while you are doing the thing you were supposed to be doing. Um, oh. Uh, one I liked. Uh, what I really liked in... Sweetie Belle was interesting in this episode. I like her probably best of the CMC between her and Apple Bloom, really, because she's the cautious one. She's usually the one that's got the most sense of anything. <laughs> Though I will say that when she's saying like the the rodeo events, well, it looks dangerous. Other than the haystacking. None of them really seem more dangerous than just track and field. <laughs> you know, steeplechase. That's just hurdles, but with ponies. You know, uh, bar- barrel racing. Um, just run around barrels. With um, cute, fluffy ponies. <laughs> She's equine. secretly <laughs> afraid of the whole exertion thing. Mm-hmm. She inherited it from her sister. Um, oh my, I'm gonna break a sweat. She's afraid of dirt. <laughs> yeah, and well, the only one that seemed dangerous was the haystacking. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, the lasso, that's not even a, that's not even close to being dangerous, unless you. Unless you're trouble shoes. Yeah, unless you <laughs> somehow, you know, roped yourself somehow. But, or lassoed something dangerous. Yes. Like a cactus. And <laughs> you ripped it back yeah. towards you for some reason. Um, but she does react mo- most appropriately to the threat of the criminal. It's like, they don't know Troubleshoes isn't a criminal. So they, you know, you know, she she goes uh, comic book guy from Simpsons. Worst idea ever. Uh, when they're walking off to go do the go follow troubleshoes. Yeah. <laughs> I also love the dialogue in this episode because there's a lot of phrases that you don't get to hear a lot in major media, like "in a dog's age" or "something fierce." You don't get to see that very much in like most media, and I like that. I love the dialogue in this episode, especially when Troubleshoes, because as as klutzy as he is, they made it very clear he is not stupid by any means, because if you listen to his vocabulary, it's just, it's pretty good for a kid show. I really love that. He's probably one of my new favorite characters this, this season so far. Uh, another I think thing. All of oh, the ahead. background characters this season have been really well thought out. Even well, those like in the first episode that really didn't have much to say or do aside from like one of us. Mm-hmm. They they still had actual backstories to them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to get in here uh, was uh, there are two schools of thought on the whole horseshoe thing. Usually, if you if you the luck is hanging above your door or something like that. Uh, the first is the one he ascribes to, and I think that one's the more popular one. Is that if you nail a horseshoe with an upward, like the U shape, mm-hmm. the idea for those who believe is that it will catch all the good luck, and if it's turned over like a skewed mark, your luck will run out; it will you know, fall out. You but know, there is another school of thought that mounting it upside down means the luck will pour down on everyone that enters and leaves that you know that facility or that building. You know, I, until that- although being hung on a cutie mark's bottom really doesn't have anywhere to pour. <laughs> yeah. You know, before I watched it's it. It's ep- nowhere appropriate for a kids show. Before I watched that episode, I just thought <laughs> He's very popular. Before I watched that episode, I just thought cutie marks, I mean, sorry, uh, horseshoes were just popular. I mean, good luck all around. Well, they are to an extent, but uh, that is one of the things that yeah. they My they mom carries stuff. a my mom carries a horseshoe in her purse. It's neither up or down. It's just in there. Yeah, it's, it's mostly when mounting it someplace. It's the general idea, usually above a door or something. Hmm. If you're going to mount it. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's see. Trouble shoes is very popular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's the main bits. I did like the fact that they did foreshadow the later talking about the rodeos being shut down and why they were shut down because of troubleshoes. Because if you notice in the first one, Applejack uh, talks about all the rodeos being shut down around Ponyville. And, you know, it comes out that, you know, that's what's happening. Yeah. Uh... Brayburn is best full sitter. That <laughs> was the worst. Good night, man. Just, I know the CMC are very elusive, but they're freaking foals. Come on. Yeah, but he's trying. Uh, he's just really not good. He has the excuse of a bu- busted hoof but still that's just he's just not a good full sitter he just wants Applejack to take his place so he's like yeah I'll watch him yeah <laughs> remember it's not that also off. brings up an interesting thing I noticed it's not Applejack off, is no very knowing. mean to her male sibling, uh, her male relatives she just doesn't take any garbage off of them. It's like no, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about whenever one of her family is injured, she just beats on them. Oh yeah, she does. Well, she doesn't. She did beat that on with them, the but back too. Like yeah, she did poke his side though. Yeah, she did poke his side when he was injured, just to kind of give him a little extra ribbing. Quite she literally, likes at this point. Dirty people. Um, I love the gag with the harmonica when he's <laughs> it's trouble shoes <laughs> and then you get Van back and it's the clown <laughs> what <laughs> um, oh my one of my favorite moments of this episode I called for a meeting not a mob scene and then the two put away a torch and pitchfork. Oh, that was yes. Funny. That felt like a Mel Brooks gag. <laughs> that felt like a Mel Brooks gag. That was awesome. I loved that. Uh, wet main Applejack. Enough said. Um, when they run off to go find the uh, the CMC in trouble shoes. The uh, Sheriff Silverstar yells out, Let's ride. Ride what? You're not riding anything. You're just running. They're riding their feet. <laughs> hooves. They don't have feet. They have hooves. They're riding their hooves. 
Well, there there was gonna be a scene where where one pony was riding on top of another pony, but it just got weird. <laughs> that's for well, the that's adult version. <laughs> it only got to storyboarding before somebody went. You know that doesn't quite look right. <laughs> Although I'm pretty I think sure I saw some of, something like that on Derby Brew. Although I'm pretty sure they've already done that in an episode. Yeah, when Pinky's writing Pinky. Uh oh, okay. Um Another thing, troubleshoes. If you know you're prone to bad luck, as you as you say, why do you store bowling balls on a high shelf? Yeah, that place entirely didn't okay. make it sense. <laughs> okay, first of all, who stores bowling balls on a high shelf, period? Yeah. And who keeps bowling balls hate just sitting on a anywhere, not in a bag or anything? Why do you have three? Uh so that he just hangs out on one hoof and rolls on the others? Mm-hmm. And another question, how do ponies even bowl? Magic. Why do they have the holes then? (laughs) The holes are for fingers. Why do they have holes? Well, I mean, I could see it working for Pinky for obvious reasons. Yeah, she has that weird fourth ball thing. Maybe there are more minotaurs than we (laughs) think. Maybe. Um, okay. Also, when they go to catch Carvel Shoes, they bring Brayburn along. Brayburn is injured. I mean, from a strategic standpoint, that creates a huge weak link if he had actually been a serious villain. <laughs> like, he could be captured pretty easily. Oh, he can only run on three legs. He's going to slow the whole pursuit down. Why would you bring him? I understand Applejack. Applejack's, you know ready and she's pretty tough but Brayburn he has a busted leg why are you doing that? I think he wants to keep an eye on the fillies when they because we all see how great of a babysitter he is Mm -hmm. they don't want him to feel left out it's like you stay here with the kid at youngins we'll go chase down the bad guy well they they were the the fillies weren't even with them when they left they were with troubleshoes when so he wouldn't have even had anything, to wa- anyone to watch until they caught him. Yeah, so. but I mean, they catch him, they take him in. Well, somebody has to keep an eye on the kids while they go take him in. Well, there's like three of them and one of him. It, it just send out. I just have Applejack watch him until they get back. Okay, Brayburn's already been shown to be non-trustworthy with this sort of thing. Okay, here's why they brought Brayburn. They had to use somebody as bait. Mmm. Yeah, I don't have to outrun the monster. I just have to outrun all of you. Yep. Well, really, only one of you. <laughs> I just have to be the second slowest. <laughs> and uh, Brayburn had some awesome faces this episode. <laughs> there were so many faces. Especially the, the face when uh, the bale falls on him at the end. That was... Wow, that was... I think it was very much beat up on Brayburn week. Yeah, and he was already injured. (laughs) Poor Brayburn. Then he he did bring some... Some of it was kind of karmically back on himself. He brought on himself, but... By being an inattentive fool sitter. Yeah, but with the CMC, anybody would be a bad full sitter. Even Fluttershy was a bad full sitter at the beginning. They ran out on Fluttershy. Yeah, remember, it's not wandering off if you know where you're going. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder if that's what the doctor's companions use as an excuse. So, would you say Troubleshoes was a horse or just a really big pony? Really big pony. 
Yeah. Right. He didn't Just have the distinctive up. horse face. And that's what I'm using as my guidepost. Oh, horse face. Mm hmm. <laughs> What's funny about horse face? I know, it just reminded me of uh, Pony.Mob. It's like, you have a big horse face. I do not. <laughs> Ooh, we have three viewers now. One is definitely, I know, is Doc. The other one is me. So we have two viewers. Yes, later. Uh, Huzzah. Yes. Anybody have anything else? For my uh, no, no, but I would like to make, uh, since I'm guessing this segment of stream is almost done, I would like to make a quick note that there is not going to be one of, well, one of these segments next week because there's no new episode this Saturday. <gasps> Gasp! <laughs> Saturday after next there will be an episode so there will be that segment Aww. So, just that heads up <laughs> that's alright I won't be here next week oh. possibly I... I'm going out of town and I'm not sure if, what time I'll be back Thursday I guess I'll be perfect then <laughs> I don't, don't know Liz how will anybody survive without me it's a question they asked at work Ooh. I just don't know. Somebody actually started crying when I said I won't be here next week. Oh no. Okey dokey. Uh, it, it's so tough being so needed. Okay, well, I have I have nothing more to say on the show. I mean, on the episode. <clears throat> I oh, finished mine. Yesterday, I was doing some shopping for my trip, and I found some um, My Little Pony things. I found a... looks like a My Little Pony lunchbox. It's called a collective tin with handle, i.e. lunchbox. And in it, they had a bunch of stuff, posters and tattoos and stuff, and a dog tag. I got Trixie! Oh, cool. <laughs> was there ever any doubt? <laughs> <laughs> it was a blind grab. It was Trixie. It's all good. Was it Trixie dog tags, or was it just like Trixie the figurine? It's a Trixie dog tag. Oh, dog. Okay, that's what that's what it was that's a Trixie what I thought. Dog it. Tag in a Pinkie Pie lunchbox. It had Mod Pie on the back. Oh. Ooh. It had it had Pinkie and Mod Pie, which is why I got it because it had Mod. Aww. <laughs> because okay. we all know how much I like rocks. To the, to the one person that is watching, we're not going anywhere. I just have to stop the stream and start it up again for the next segment. Yes. Because he doesn't like editing. Easy. <laughs> and it and it makes it easier to add the sound because I know how long each segment was. It's not that I don't like editing. My computer hates editing. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. I know I'm giving you a hard time. <laughs> 